Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Now I'm going to start the head of income. In Income Tax Act 1961, already I have completed so many videos on unit number one introduction. What is tax? What are the different types of taxes, direct tax, indirect, indirect tax, and what are the basic concepts? Then what are the tax rules and exemptions? agricultural income, then residential status, incidence of tax, all those concepts have already completed in unit number one. Now, according to Income Tax Act, the total income of a person will be divided into five heads. Income from salary, income from house property, profits and gains of business and profession, capital gain and income from other sources. The first four heads are specific heads and the last fifth head income from other source is a residual head. If an income does not fall in the first four categories, it will be put to tax in the last category, open head. So now I am going to start the first head of income that is salary, income from salary. Now the problems are based on the provisions. If you don't understand, remember the provisions you cannot be able to do the problems. Otherwise, mechanically, simply you have to remember where, which item should be taken where without any logic. That is completely waste of time. So my suggestion to all the students, be perfect on the provisions, then only you should go to problems. I got many comments from my viewers, start the problem immediately, sir. How I can start if you don't know the provisions? So you have, you must have some patience. If you want the complete knowledge, complete grasp, if you want to enjoy the subject, then you have to remember, you have to remember the provisions. You have to watch the videos of theory. Then only you can easily do the problem. You can understand easily, right? So hope you are getting my point. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain you what is salary actually and what are the components of salary? What is basic Pay. All these things I am going to explain you and this is must for doing the problems on salary income. So before going ahead, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I will explain every point. Now, income from salary. First of all, remuneration received by an employee out of employment from the employer will be treated as salary. Remember, any remuneration received by the employee out of employment from the employer, that income will be treated as salary. So you have to remember, so Income Tax Act has given the provision that if a person is receiving some remuneration from another person, employer, out of employment, then only it will be treated as income from salary. Second, according to the Income Tax Act, if the relationship between the payer and the pay, so Income Tax Act 1961 has given the provision, if the relationship between the payer of the remuneration and the receiver of the remuneration is that of employer and employee, master and servant, then only the remuneration received will be treated as income from salary. Simply, the relation should be of employer, employee or master and servant, then only the income received will be treated as income from salary. If the income cannot be treated as income from salary, then it will be taxable under income from other sources. That's why Income Tax Act has made one head open, completely open, so that if any income does not fall in the first four heads, it will be put to tax in the last head, income from other sources. That's why if we find that the employer is paying some amount to the employee, but it will not come under salary, then it will be put to tax under income from other sources. There are many instances where it appears as salary, but it is not taxed under salary. Simple example I will give you, the salary paid to MPs, Member of Parliament or MLAs. Salary received by MP and MLA is from the government. But do you think that there is a relationship of employer and employee between government and MP? No. 
no employer and employee relationship is there but still they are getting the salary so that salary is not taxable under salary income it is taxable under income from other sources now components of salary income income from salary will be divided into four subheads first one is salary second one allowances third one perquisites and fourth one profit in lieu of salary in the coming videos i will explain each in this video i will explain about salary in the coming videos i will explain about allowances what are the, what do you mean by allowance what are the different types of allowances what are the provisions for allowances then perquisites meaning of perquisites how it is taxable all these things i am going to cover up in the coming videos now some more points regarding income from salary when you compute income from salary you have to remember some provisions given by the income tax act so what are the provisions regarding salary first according to section 15 of the income tax act 1961 salary includes so section 15 of the income tax act 1961 has given that salary will must include the following what are the things salary due from present or former employer that means salary may be received from the present employer or salary may be received from the past employer former employer that is taxable under the head income from salary second advance salary receipt not loans if loan is given by the employer to the employee that loan amount is not salary income ha huh? if advance salary is given for example current month is january the employee has requested the employer to pay the salary for the next 6 months in advance so employer has given 6 months advance salary to the employee that advance salary will also be treated as a part of salary income then arrears of salary salary due but not paid for example during the current financial year out of 12 months the employer has paid only 10 months salary 2 months salary accrued but not received by the employer by the employee in that case income tax act says accrued salary is also income from salary so while computing income from salary we have to take all 12 months salary 10 months salary received and 2 months salary accrued due but not received it is tax so next salary is taxable on accrual or receipt basis whichever appears earlier if accrued appears earlier it will be taxable if receipt appears earlier it will be taxable example during the current year out of 12 months 10 months salary paid 2 months salary accrued not paid not due sorry not paid so that 2 months salary will also be included in the income of the in the salary income of the employee accrued but not received similarly received but not accrued that means during the current year the salary received is for 15 months 12 months for the current year and next year's advance salary 3 months so totally 15 months salary he has received so income tax act says tax will be applied on all 15 months whichever appears earlier either accrual or receipt basis salary received from two employers in the same financial year due to change in employment is considered as salary income sometimes the employee may change the employers so first 6 months he was working in abc limited next 6 months the employee was working in xyz limited so during the year itself he has received 6 months salary from abc company and 6 months salary from xyz company income tax act says we will not compute income from salary separately we will combine the total salary received from both the employers next any amount received from former employer is taxable under this head any remuneration or any amount received from the former employer not present employer that is also taxable under the head income from salary now any amount received from prospective employer prospective employer means future employer example there is an agreement between the employer and the employee employer says next year you have to join but i am paying the salary from now this year onwards that means the employee is getting the salary from the prospective or future employer 
that amount received is also taxable under the head income from salary next if the employer pays income tax on the income of the employee in this case tax paid will be considered as salary income sometimes the employer has agreed to pay the income tax of the employee for example mr x is the employee his monthly salary is 50000 monthly salary 50000 per annum it comes to 6 lakh rupees so per annum 6 lakh rupees is the total salary income of the of mr x employer says every month i will pay 5000 rupees as tax for you the income tax of Mr. X is being paid by the employer. How much employer pays every month 5,000 rupees is depositing in income tax department. Every month he is uh, paying 5,000 rupees to income tax department on behalf of Mr. X. So income tax act says whatever income tax paid by the employer of the employee will be added to salary income simple example per month 50,000 50,000 into 12 6 lakh employee got 6 lakh rupees salary from the employer apart from that employer pays 60,000 rupees for the whole year as income tax of the employee to the income tax department now income tax act says whatever income tax paid by the employer that will be added to salary income salary he has received 6 lakh plus 60,000 income tax paid by the employer so total 6 lakh 60,000 is the salary income of the employee next is if an employer makes any deductions from salary income like insurance premium pf contribution the same should be added sometimes the employer will deduct insurance premium or provident fund contribution from the employee mr x is getting 50,000 rupees per month salary per month salary 50,000 but according to the agreement employer says out of 50,000 we are deducting 10,000 because that 10,000 is for insurance premium and for PF contribution the net amount how much he is getting only 40,000 is getting but income tax act says whatever deduction made by the employer that should be added back to salary so again 40,000 he received, 10,000 deducted, that 10,000 will be added, 40,000 plus 10,000, 50,000 will be the income from salary. So whatever deductions made by the employer, that deduction will be added back to salary. Place of accrual of salary is the place of employment. So where, whichever place the salary accrued, that will be called the place of employment. So for this purpose, salary earned in India is deemed to accrue and arise in India even if it is paid outside India. So if an employee has earned salary in India, it is deemed to accrued and arised in India. Whether it is paid in India or outside India immaterial because it is accrued in India, so it is an Indian income. Next salary paid or payable by Indian government to a citizen of India for the services rendered outside India. Sometimes what will happen? Indian citizens are appointed by the government of India and posted abroad in the form of ambassadors. In the form of ambassadors to outside country, example USA. Indian embassy is working in USA. Their ambassador is working. Who has appointed this ambassador? Indian government appointed, Indian citizen person appointed. Then whatever salary paid to that ambassador is accrued in India. It is taxable in India. So the person is rendering the service outside India, but salary is paid or generated from India. So it is an Indian income, salary is taxable. However, if any allowances or perquisites are given to that person, who is working abroad that is exempted from tax this point you remember then uh, exempted if the salary is paid by foreign government in a foreign country who is not a citizen of India and whose residential status is non-resident is uh, then income is not taxable in India if a person is working in a foreign country the income is earned in the foreign country he is a non-citizen in India 
then whatever income he has earned there, it is not taxable in India. Because the income is earned outside India, received outside India for a person who is not a citizen of India. Then any income he has earned there is not at all taxable in India. That's all. So these are the points you have to remember regarding salary. Now, subhead salary. Actually, the components of salaries are salary, allowances, perquisites, and profitability of salary. The first subhead is salary. So what are the items that will come under the head of salary? First one is basic pay. Basic pay is fully taxable. In the coming problems, when you see the in the problem basic pay, immediately you should think that basic pay is fully taxable under the subhead salary. Under the subhead salary. Then wages. The basic pay or wages, fully taxable. Bonus. Bonus given by the employer to the employee, fully taxable under the subhead salary. Gratuity. What is gratuity? In the coming videos, I will explain you regarding retirement benefits. Gratuity, normally it is the amount which is paid by the employer to the employee at the time of retirement. It is paid by the government employees. Uh, it was given to the government employees as well as non-government employees. So gratuity received by the employees, unexempted amount is taxable. That means out of the total amount received from the employer, some amount is exempted. Remaining amount is taxable. So unexempted amount is taxable for gratuity. Pension. Pension, again we will discuss more in the coming videos. Right now pension is the amount received from the former employer after retirement. When a person retires after providing some years of service, he will get <coughs> pension. So income tax act says pension is also taxable under the subhead salary. Next one, commission. If employer pays commission to the employee, it is fully taxable under the subhead salary. Then employer's contribution to RPF, <coughs> recognized provident fund. Again, this RPF we are going to discuss in the coming videos. So if the employer contributes to RPF in excess of 12% of salary, in excess of 12% of salary is also taxable, fully taxable. Then interest on RPF over 9.5% rate. So income tax act says if interest is accruing on RPF, we have to see the rate. If the rate is up to 9.5%, not taxable. If the rate of interest is more than 9.5%, it is fully taxable. Then advanced salary received. Just now I told you, fully taxable. Then arrears of salary if not taxed earlier. That means previous months, previous year's salary. So if arrears of salary received during the current year of last year, if it is not taxed last year, now it will be taxable. Then surrender or leave and cashment. Sometimes the employer will allow, will allow some leave to the employee. For example, per annum, suppose 15 days leave will be allowed. 15 days leave will be allowed by the employer to the employee. But employee has not availed the leave. He has not taken the leave. Then employer will say you can encash your leave. You can get the cash payment for that leave which you have not availed. That is called leave encashment. It is fully taxable. Then remuneration of teachers and lecturers from university or other body for setting up or valuing papers, etc. Taxable under that income from other sources. The teachers and lecturers working in a school, college, they are getting the salary. The per month salary received by teachers and lecturers fully taxable under the head salary. But apart from that, the teachers and lecturers are allotted the contract. The contract work is they have to make the question papers. They have to value the answer scripts. For this extra work of making the question papers or valuing the answer scripts, some amount will be paid by the employer. Income Tax Act says it is not taxable under salary. It is taxable under income from other sources. So amount received for making question papers or valuing the answer scripts is taxable under income from other sources. Income tax is the employee paid by the employer. 
just now I told you if the income tax of the employee is paid by the employer then that will be added to income of this employee it is fully taxable next remuneration for extra duties over time sometimes the worker the employee will work over time extra time for doing extra time over time allowance will be given by the employer that overtime allowance is also taxable under the income from salary next contribution made by the central government or state government or any other employers to new pension scheme under section 80 ccd a new scheme was framed by income tax act under section 80 ccd for pension fund scheme so if the employer contributes whether the employer is state, central government state government or any other body then if, it, if they contribute to uh, this uh, pension new pension fund scheme it is fully taxable so these are the points uh, these are the items which come under the subhead salary which come under the subhead salary so if you with full concentration if you watch this video you don't find any difficulty while doing the problems that which items should be taken under which head subhead Totally four subheads are there: salary, allowances, perquisite, profit and layoff salary. So under the subhead salary, these are all the items that may appear. That's it. Now the last topic in this video is basic pay. The basic pay is one of the item under salary. Here you can see basic pay fully taxed. First item. Basic pay is the prime salary. It is the prime salary. The salary may change every year. The basic pay may not remain same. The basic pay may change every year due to increments. Whenever there is an agreement between the employer and the employee, the employer will specify that every year there will be an increment of so and so amount. So for example, I have taken here, if the basic salary of an employee is 5000 per month and increment is 200, increment is 200, that means first year of service first year of service every month you will get 5000 rupees when the second year starts 200 rupees will be increased increment now instead of 5000 second year he will get 5200 every month 5200 now this will go up to the end of second year then third year starts when third year starts again 200 rupees will be included that means 5400 so how much would be the salary? First year every month 5000, second year every month 5200, third year every month 5400, next fourth year every month 5600, like that increment will go on, right? In some organization basic pay will be in a graded form. Sometimes the employer will give to the employee a graded form of basic. So what is the graded form like this example I have taken 11,000 dash 400 dash 13,000 dash 500 dash 15,000 dash 800 dash 17,400 this is called the graded form of basic pay what does it mean it means that first year of service when he joins first year of service every month he will get 11,000 rupees per month every month 11,000 rupees he will get for first year as soon as the second year starts the salary will increase by 400 so 11,000 plus 400 11,400 is the basic pay every month for second year when third year starts again 400 will be increased so 11,400 plus 400 11,800 he will get in the third year every month like this it will go on increase every year for 400 rupees till then Till the amount reach 13,000. When the amount reach 13,000, after 13,000, 400 will not be increased. The increment is 500. So after reaching 13,000, the annual increment will be 500 rupees. Every year, 500 rupees will be increased. This will go up to 15,000. When the salary reaches 15,000, after 15,000, the increment will not be 500. The increment will be 800. After 15,000, the annual increment will be 800. So 15,800, then 15,800 plus 800, 16,600, like that, it will change. It will go up to 17,400. 17,400 17, is the maximum limit of basic. 
after reaching the 17400 no more increments are there until and unless the pay scale is revised if the pay scale is not revised then there is no increment after 17400 this is the meaning of the term basic pay in the next video inshallah we'll do the problems also on basic pay so in this video i have explained you about the i mean main points you have to remember regarding the salary income because these points will be considered while doing the problems on income from salary then components of income from salary salary allowances perquisite profitability of salary so what are the items that will come under subhead salary i have explained you all the items and lastly i have explained you about the basic pay so if you are satisfied give a like to the video share my channel among your friends among your group so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge give your comments on these videos and subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed and by the super thanks which is given below my video inshallah we will continue the next topic in the next video